Namaste, Officer Scorpios, and welcome to Soul Horoscope Super Scope Weekly Report. My name is Christopher Wotecki. I am your sensei to serious joy. So great to be back. Pardon my disappearance there. It's my birthday. And I want to say thank you to everyone who has stopped by my Facebook and said happy birthday and sent me greetings. Overwhelming, great, wonderful love. I'm so grateful to be of service, and I'm so grateful for you and for you watching. So thank you so much. I feel really good this birthday, even though Mars is freaking retrograde and everything's inside out, but it's okay. It's okay. I know things are going to turn out for us. And I know because you're my opposite sun sign, you are having some troubles, my friend, too. It's not an easy time. First of all, why is this a super scope? Well, it's super because it suits Scorpio, Scorpio risings, and if you have Venus in Scorpio, I have a little segment about love a little bit later for you. Big changes happening there. And it really is about love and intimacy changes for Scorpios and Scorpio Risings. You're in your annual marriage transit, but this year the universe is putting a, a lot of pressure for it to change and change for the good. We had a solar eclipse in chapter one of Sun and Taurus, and that was reestablishing balance with yourself. So that was only dramatic as it uh, came to how far out of balance you were with yourself. Then when I was away for my birthday, judgment time, figuring out judging who's judging who. And now this week we move into harmony, trying to create bliss in your long-term relationships or set the course for bliss if you're not in long-term relationships. All right. So up in the skies, we still have this grand cross going on, which is a tug of war and the universe adds another planet to the mix. So the sun and Saturn oppose this week too. I'll show you that in just a minute. But in basis, the hard part is Mars retrograde, the red planet Mars there. That is calling for Scorpios to be finding their footing for interface. So where do I step on? What do I step in inside? How do I, where's the strong me at? Damn it. Right. That's the Mars retrograde. And it continues until May 20th. FYI. On the other side is Uranus in Aries. All the details of life that keep blowing up in your face when you don't know where the faith is. I know, I know. I'm having it too as a Scorpio, as a Taurus, I mean. So that's one of the lines. Then there's Jupiter versus Pluto, all right? And Pluto in Capricorn is the way you think. And in order for this to pull off, you cannot slip into the old thinking. You cannot. When I say don't cross this line, I mean in a Scorpio way. Don't go into the old thinking. Be a Scorpio about that. What's moving forward is the new beliefs which are now starting to really take root this week, and that's the whole point. Now, the solar eclipse was in Taurus, planting a new seed of how you are married to you. So these are new marriage vows that you are going to run with with your belief structure and create internal propaganda to support the new marriage vows. On the other side of the old marriage vows is Saturn saying, okay, as you commit to yourself, do not uh, let anyone trample on your boundaries. Do not let you go back on your own boundaries. Do not go back on your new ego. Do not go forward. Do not pass go and collect $200, but do not go back on the old stuff. So it is a balance between being strong uh, and not letting yourself down and also standing up to the new mirage vows, which means everyone else in your life has got to go somewhere else and handle it, deal with it. And they are. I've been joking about Saturn and Scorpio. This is the turning point. Now, what will happen according to this is with your beliefs moving forward and your learning moving forward, and with you maintaining your boundaries at Saturn, then Chiron in the third corner there, that's your heart healing. So your heart heals when you move forward with learning and maintain what you do know. Your heart heals automatically. So you don't have to work at it, it will happen. Now that said, Mother's Day is kind of tough this year. The moon will be in Libra on Sunday, May 11th. And so your emotions will be deeply stirring in the Mars retrograde. Where's my footing? Where's my footing? So you'll be kind of in the rabbit hole on Sunday and Monday, mother or not, whether you're a mother or not, everyone has a mother. There is a double yawn, which says, just be mindful of your own feelings on Mother's Day, no matter who you are, what you stand in that. And we're going to get through it. Now we're going into the passionate part of it. So there's a big temptation into fighting and into the past, especially with families. It's kind of cliche and it happens through Sunday. On Monday, another very cloudy, turbulent day, especially for you and turbulent for your relationships. You might be trying to take your relationship to a higher level now and it's at a level where you can't tit tat over the details. You got to surrender to whether it feels right or doesn't feel right and go with your feelings. And since you're clearing out old karma, whether or not it feels right is a question of truth or karma. So really get to the bottom of where the feelings are coming from and make sure it is not coming from you on Monday. Then the moon goes full in Scorpio. This is the most righteous, confident, probably sexiest full moon for Scorpios. This is where 
many farmers should lock up their virgin daughters. The moon will be a full moon at step 23. So your passion is going to go through the roof and you're letting go of some old stuff. And so you're going to feel very strong, incredibly strong on this Wednesday. This Wednesday is giving you the strength to do what you have to do in your long-term partnerships to play it out. Now, keep in mind, everyone's got a full moon this, this day, but not in Scorpio. So this is where you should probably play it to your liking. It may happen at work or with work stuff because it happens in the daytime in the United States and it happens at nighttime in Europe. And what's funny is you'll find in Europe, there'll be a lot of people doing long-term relationship changes in the full moon. In the United States, because it's at work, they'll be making some huffs and puffs about work a lot. It's just interesting the way to see that. So it's a huge uh, squaring off of ego versus marriage for this full moon. Then on Thursday, the moon moves into Sag, so you might be worried about money. Be careful falling into that trap Thursday and Friday. And then Saturday, you're having to make some sort of commitment to a long-term partnership, to yourself, to others, everything. And for those involved in LTRs, long-term relationships, you still will be making some sort of recommitment, remarriage, re-expansion, or adding on to the family to the relationship plan. So this week is about stabilizing your partnerships, your long-term relationships, expanding, then in the full moon, trimming off either exaggerated ego or trimming off exaggerated relationship commitments, committing to what's left and committing to growing. That is the week in essence. Now, for those of you who have Venus in Scorpio, bow, chicka, bow, talking about the love, this is actually a pretty profound change of heart to this week for those who have Venus in Scorpio because uh, Venus herself will cross over Uranus and hit 15 degrees by the end of the week. So in a way, there's a personal boundary change. So if those with Venus and Scorpio may be okay to a certain lover on Monday and then not okay on Friday. And I would err that Friday is closer to the truth. With Mars retrograde on top of all of this, that means that the lovers and the past things we used to leap on sexually are coming to the surface and you're probably getting a lot of invitations down the old memory lane. But I wouldn't necessarily go there. I would learn why you're not there. And that's the whole point. So over the course of the week, those with Venus and Scorpio will start the week feeling one way about trusted boundaries and end the week feeling the other way. And it very much probably has a lot to do with whatever your sun sign story is telling you. Now, if you'd like to know how this whole thing ends, I've recorded a full 30 minute video called the Megascope Monthly Reports. They're available at soulmart.me. You can get the MP3 for $9.99 or the video for $11.11. And if you buy two, you get three free. So this is a way to um, really get the full 360 on where your life is going. If you're watching us on YouTube, we ask, please subscribe to our channel. We do appreciate that. And if you're on Facebook, you can like us by going to soulgarden.me. It'll take you straight there. And you can sign my birthday card if you have it already. And if you have, thank you so much. Scorpios never forget me. They're one of the first actually to call or send a text message. And that, I just want to say I'm grateful to all the Scorpios out there who are my friends. You've always been there for me, true and true to the end. So I'm grateful. If you're uh, wondering if anyone out there really is loyal, hey, us Tauruses, we'll be there. Maybe we're dumb as hell, but we're there chewing our curd. So uh, thank you so much. I will see you in seven days. Until then, my friend, live, love, be.